In this video, I'm going to show you how to add a booking component to your contact form 7 forms so you can have your customers pick a time and a day for you to reach out to them or for you to provide them service for whatever services you provide. And we're getting started right now. Hey everybody, welcome back to another video. It's Bjorn from WP Learning Lab where we help you get better at WordPress so you can earn more for yourself, for your clients, and for your business. And if it's your first time here, make sure you hit the subscribe button and then hit the bell notification icon so you're notified when, when we publish more awesome material. And with that out of the way, let's head over to the screen capture so we can start building this form right now. I'll see you there. So let's hop right into it. We're here in the WordPress dashboard. The first thing we're gonna do is make sure we have contact form seven installed. I already have it installed here in case you don't, just head over to plugins and click on add new. Then in the search bar up here, type in contact form seven. And it's this first one up here in the top left corner. If you don't have it installed yet, it's gonna say install now. Click on that button. After that, you're gonna see an activate button, a blue one, click on that. And then the, this plugin will be activated and you will have a new entry over here called contact. We're gonna to get to that in just a second. But now we're gonna add in a date picker add-on for that plugin. So even if you have Contact Form 7 installed already, we need to get this date picker add-on. And that is what is going to allow people to schedule with you through this form. So I just added date picker to my search up there. And I always use this first one. Not the prettiest thumbnail, but the plugin works really well. I'm gonna click on install now and then activate. And the plugin's ready to rock and roll. What it's done is it's added two little options to our contact forms. So I'm gonna head over to contact. That's gonna bring up a list of all the contact forms we have. I currently just have one, it's called basic form. I'm gonna edit that one. If you just installed the plugin fresh, you'll also have one form here that is pre-built. And if you're already using this form, you might have other forms. So just pick the one where you wanna add the date picker and scheduling functionality, and then edit that one or create a brand new one. It's up to you. So what I do now is I add the fields that I want from someone who's requesting service. So I would want their name. I usually add their first name and their last name in here. So I'm just gonna duplicate this. Call this your first name, your last name. Uh, and I'm just gonna change this label to first. And last, I'm kind of doing this shorthand. If you're not sure what I'm doing, either do exactly what I'm doing or actually use the insert text button here. And then what I just did shorthand was added your first name for the name field. And that's what is used throughout the plugin. So I just did shorthand. You can do it the long way or just do exactly what I do and you'll be fine. So first name, last name, email. And then I want to add in the ability to pick a date and time. So I'm just gonna click this button here. And we have, I'm gonna make it a required field, first of all. Now we have a bunch of things we can set. You can just keep the default settings. You don't have to change anything here if you don't want to. There's a lot of stuff you can change, but you don't have to change anything. If you click on insert tag, I'll show you how it looks just default. And then after that, I'm gonna have in here type of service request required uh, service requested and it's going to make this a details field take out these two spell details properly so now we're going to have a basic form created let's take a gander at how this looks on our site so I'm just saving this form right now. What I have to do is copy the shortcode up at the top and go to either a post or a page. I actually already have a page with this shortcode on it called the basic form page, but you would create a new page or you would go to a page where you want the form to appear. And then you would just paste that shortcode right into here and then click on update or publish. And then following that, we're gonna view the page this is how it looks. It's unstyled. My date picker doesn't have a label, so it's not that great. I'm just going to add a label by just copying this label. Have the label closing tag. Pick a date and time. And then save that. 
Now, if we go back to this page, once this is saved and refresh, we don't have a pick a date and time. Now this is, it looks like a regular input field, but we're going to see in just a second that it's not. I'm just going to quickly fill this in. Let's use my auto fill. If I click on this date and time, it actually shows a date picker. So we could pick a date, say they want us to come, or I want your service on Saturday. Maybe we work on Saturdays, I don't know. But you can pick a time down here. So we got Saturday the 18th at 10 a.m. By default, this is the 24 hour clock. So it goes up to 24 hours. If you don't want that, I'm gonna show you how to fix that in just a second. So I'm gonna say 10 a.m. Actually 10, 10, 19 is what I want you to show up. And then I click on done and it enters that date right here. And then the type of service I want is uh, window cleaning. Details, my windows are dirty. And this is a basic scheduling form. The, the problem with doing it this way, the free way, I'll call it, is that they send you this date and time request, but you might already have an appointment on that day or you might not want to work that day. Maybe Saturday's a day off for you. But the, the free plugins you find aren't able to figure that out. You can get some paid solutions like Acuity Scheduler or Calendly, which actually sync with the Google Calendar. So if you in that calendar say, I don't work Saturdays and Sundays, Saturdays and Sundays won't be options on that calendar. If you, for example, have an appointment already scheduled for Tuesday at 10 a.m., that time slot will no longer be on the calendar. So for the paid options, instead of having a calendar where they can choose anything, they see a full calendar, but they can only choose spots that are still available. And that's the big advantage of using the paid ones, and they're not that expensive. If this is your business, if for nine bucks a month, or under 20 usually, you can get a great solution to help you schedule and help you automate your, uh, your business, or the scheduling part of your business anyway. So this is the, the basic form. So they would get, after they click send, we're going to set up the email in just a second, but after they click send, you would get a message saying such and such. Uh, you probably want to add a phone number field and then add whatever fields you need for your business. Uh, but if we go back here, we've changed a lot in here. We changed all these references, all these, and we've added this one. So in the mail tab, it's going to be very out of date. Like your subject doesn't even exist anymore. We changed that to... Uh, your service requested. So what we have to do is come back here. Your name doesn't exist either. So we have all up here. We have all the short codes available that we created over in the form tab. So we want to put these where we want them. So I'm going to have in here, um, just going to have service request from website for the from the subject will be First name, last name, uh, requests, and then service requested. This had an idea. For the service requested field, it would be great to have a drop down where you define what the options are so that, I mean, people might not know what, you might not even do window cleaning, for example. But if you have a set options in a drop down, they can pick which ones apply to them and make this process a whole lot more painless. So we have, uh, this is gonna, when we get the email, it's gonna say first name, last name requests, and the service they wrote in there. And I'm just gonna put all that information, I'm just gonna put all this in here. And I'm gonna say, uh, customer name, customer email, Preferred date and time, service requested, and details. I'm going to put the details in a separate line. Okay, so what we have here is the basic email format. Something I would do, another idea I had while I'm creating this, for the, I said preferred date and time because that date and time you might actually have scheduled already. So clearly you need a phone number field and then you would call them and say, hey, that time's taken, can we schedule a different one? For example, uh, so this is the email that goes to 
me right now, or you'd put your email in there. And if we scroll down a little bit further, we can actually make another email and we could send this email to them. So the your email field, that's their email address. And you could have it from, put your name in here, put your, your uh, actual email address in there. And then for the subject says, uh, thank you for requesting service. And in the message body, we can just copy what we have. So I'm going to write in here, uh, we will be in touch shortly. Below is a summary of the information we received. And just paste that down there again. Delete that portion down there. And now they're going to get an email and you're going to get an email if you set this up this way. I'm going to click on save. And now we're actually going to test this out. So my email, actually I'm going to refresh this page so all the changes take effect. So I'm going to type in here, autofill all this stuff. My email I'm going to change to a different one, wplearninglab.com. Pick a date and time. Done. Uh, window cleaning. My windows are, wow, are dirty. And then click on send. So here it says, thank you for your message. It has been sent. I'm going to pop into those two email accounts and see what those messages actually look like. Be right back. So here's what the two messages look like. The first one that goes to you, or the one that said, I said to go to me, has the information that the customer sent, and that's it. And the one that goes to the customer has that same information, because we copied that email, but also has this line at the top saying, we'll be in touch with you shortly. Here is what we received from you below. And that's all there is to those emails. And one thing I promised to show you was how to change the time from being a 24 hour clock to a 12 hour clock. So you can do that really fast. It's really easy. If we go to our form, all you have to do is go down to the time format section, change the capital H's to lowercase h's and add a colon and two T's. Then click on save. And then we go back over here, refresh this form. And now when we pick a time, we have 12 AM. And as we scroll, we see we move into PM. Only goes to 11 because the minutes will take you up to 11.59. And then we schedule 12 AM. So it's got the whole 24 hours on the 12 hour clock instead of the 24. So that's how easy it is to build a contact form 7 form with a booking component. If you want to be a little more advanced, you'd use something like Calendly or Acuity Scheduler, which allows you to automate the process even more and sync with your Google Calendar so people can choose actual days and times where you have availability because you can set your schedule in those apps, which is pretty cool. And if you want to be super advanced, you can integrate with something like Infusionsoft where you can send text messages back and forth to your clients and basically have the scheduling done on autopilot, which takes all that off your plate, which is pretty awesome. Anyway, I hope this video helps you. If you haven't done so yet, please hit the subscribe button then hit the bell notification icon so you're notified when we publish more awesome tutorials for you. And click on that card that just appeared up in the top right because there's some awesome free WordPress resources for you there. And until next time, keep crushing it with WordPress and I'll see you in the next video.